Perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Paula, uh, and with me today, I have a number one best-selling uh, author from Amazon, <laughs> Emma Doyle, um, and as always, the lovely Bridget. Hello. And we are going to take you through today, our coaching cafe for today is all we're doing, we're continuing with our best practices and we've got what makes a great coach. How many copies have you had? Uh, mm. I'm only on number one, which I think is not bad for nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, but the real focus of the topic is energy. All right. So um, as per normal, as we always start with our acknowledgement of country. So we acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we meet today and their continuing connection to the land waters and communities of Australia. We pay our respects to them and to their elders past, present and emerging. Today I'm standing on um, Noongar land here in Western Australia and I pay my respects to everyone around the world and to their respective elders, custodians um, and Indigenous people. So our agenda for today, we're going to look at stories, research questions from the book around energy. Um, as always, though, this is the collaborative um, work. So we're looking at creating community, creating shared learning experience, thought provoking conversation. Um, and for those looking for their CCEU, they will be at the end of the session. So I'm going to stop sharing because I don't think we need that this morning and I'm going to hand over to Bridget just to get us started. Oh, sure. So I believe that um, the lovely Natalie Ashdown is going to be joining us shortly, but um, I just want to highlight that in terms of your coaching cafes, uh, what you've explored so far, you've, you've talked about passion, listening, uh, empathy, uh, resilience, decision-making, purpose and communication, which we, we did uh, last week. And this week, we're going to talk about energy. So Emma, anyone that knows you will know that you have that boundless energy, that infectious energy about you. And the heading for the webinar, of course, is how many coffees have you had? So can you tell us the story about how your energy might have been attributed to an overdose of caffeine? And welcome to the beautiful Natalie Ashdown too, who's just joined us. <laughs> Hi everyone. Sorry, I'm a bit late. I was just coming off another another uh, coaching. I was just coming off another coaching uh, workshop. So carry on. Well, yeah, sorry. So yeah, the story great. about how your energy might have uh, been attributed to an overdose of caffeine. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in, and it's great to be back talking about practice five energy. Uh, so it was one of those beautiful moments in at, during the Australian Open where Virgin Australia had uh, been able to engage the services of superstar Maria Sharapova. And they put on two mornings for their uh, frequent flyer customers, like their platinum members. And so I was given this task of being able to uh, it was it was one of those things where her management said, OK, she doesn't want to run run much, of course, because she was still in the tournament and she really wants she wants to engage with everybody. But she really doesn't want to have to move, which is fair enough, but especially at seven o'clock in the morning. And so I had to uh, engage the audience. I had to be able to work in with her parameters and make sure everyone played with her and played against her and make sure that they also didn't injure themselves. So I was actually treating them as I often do like high performers. And I think, so from the word go, I think there was a really genuine respect there that I was treating them like uh, professional players. I was like, well, let's, let's do a great warm up. And she comes in during the warm up, and I'm waking up the brain, which is a huge part of my philosophy, which uh, taps beautifully into practice one around decision making and I was just doing my thing I was just being me and she said listen I love your energy how many cups of coffee have you had and as a Melbourneian, I am a fan of a skinny latte or a flat white <laughs> so please pop, pop in the chat box your drink of choice I would love to know but it was a beautiful moment of respect it was a moment of uh, inspiration because as we know where your energy goes, your attention flows. 
and the other way around. And I love that, that as it relates to inspiring people to bring them along, especially at that time in the morning. So, uh, so that was that was a really it, and it was a bit of an icebreaker as well. The minute she said that, I was like, well, she's in Melbourne, so clearly she knows as Melburnians how much we appreciate quality coffee. Uh, and it was it was a great moment and it was, a, it was a great experience. So thank you, Bridge, for asking that. Lovely. And so where would you say that that energy comes from, Em? I think that there's no doubt the, the energy that I've had growing up, even being number three of four kids. So being in a family of hustle and bustle and, and, and my granddad lived with us and and at the time and so there's always that energy of also growing up where if you want to be heard at the dinner table or you know and, and we we lived in Australia then we lived in the UK then we lived in Australia then we lived back in the UK when I was in primary school so there's that energy of how do you make friends and how do you in, integrate into the world so fast forward I think there was a, there was a little bit of, um, being completely honest, natural ability to uh, ignite energy. And also I've had to harness it. I've had to work on it because my barometer, is, as Matt always says, the energy barometer had often, for me, tipped too much one way and I would, I would, get, I would get sick. Uh, and as I know that we all appreciate and agree that our mind and our body are intrinsically connected, so I'd have this moment where my energy would almost go too far. Uh, and that's something that I've really had to work on. So where does it come from? It comes from self-awareness. It comes from knowing what you're passionate about. So if you're self-aware, then you can also tap into practice four, which is passion, and, and practice three, which is purpose. And both of those practices actually show up in practice five, which I think is really awesome. And not just from Natalie and I, but also from other coaches when we ask them, well, what does energy mean and where does it come from? So I think that's super interesting. Uh, but self-awareness, knowing what you're passionate about, then fires that energy up. And, and I think that's a big part of where it comes from. Uh, so that would be my thoughts around that. Sure, Any, sure. Anyone want to jump in? Uh, Nat, if you want to jump in, I was going to move on to, you've mentioned uh, in the book, you talk about uh, energy signature. Uh, and just wondering if you can tell us more about that. Well, it's it comes from one of my men, mentors in Claude Silver, who is the one of the first ever chief heart officers of Vayner Media. Now, I'm sure a lot of people on the line would have heard of Gary V. Uh, you know, he's huge, right? And so I'd never even heard of a chief heart officer. And I love the fact that Simon Blair, who was one of the original co-founders on, on my podcast, the coaching podcast, he just reached out to her on LinkedIn. Like we didn't have a connection, but then of course, what did I do? What did my energy do? I said, hey, Claude, can I buy you breakfast at your convenience when I happen to be in Manhattan uh, before work? And she said, yes. And we've formed this great friendship and uh, she's obviously beautifully written a testimonial on the back of the book, which I'm super grateful for. So she says your energy introduces you first. Mm. And that then led me to think about, imagine if we all have an energy signature and, and please don't define yourself. You know, I'm not saying one energy signature, that's it. And that's who you are. I'm saying, imagine if, you took that concept of saying, how do you want to show up? Or one of our reflective questions in the opening chapter, being the best coach that you can be, is who do you need to become to get to where you want to go? That's one of my favourite questions in the entire book. And so when she said that, I was like, this energy signature, the energy that we give off, the energy that we portray, the energy when you first meet someone, or even when somebody leaves a conversation with you, how do they feel after that interaction and that engagement? And so that's what the energy signature means to me. Mm. And I think it's important that we all reflect continuously on what it is that our energy signature releases in, into the world. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think to add to that, uh, the great thing about signatures is you can work on them, can't you? You can play around with signatures and you can switch them up and make them pretty and add things so that they're more interesting and lovely right. and what have you. And it's the same with uh, what you're saying there with, with your own energy. And so what do I want my signature to look like? You know, this is what it might look like now. What do I need to add or do differently or whatever mm. to add to that signature? Nat, do you want to add anything to yeah, I think it's a fantastic um, metaphor, the idea of a signature, just as you've um, offered their bridge. And, and I think it's, um, it's the, the coaching questions, like we just hear the coaching questions that Emma's asking, don't we? Like, how do you want to show up? How do you want to come across? Um, these kind of questions are questions that we can ask um, of ourselves, but also of the people that we're, that we're coaching um, in the workplace. You know, I'm thinking even when we're just in a meeting, um, how do we want to, um, what energy do we want to bring to that meeting? Uh, and we can have a think about this when we're coaching others around um, energy as well. And I think the, um, the thing I've been, been, been exploring is where does the energy come from? So uh, I've just come off a, 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 a delivering a coaching, uh, a two-hour session, and I'm working with a group of people who are making a global impact on on climate change. And I'm thinking my energy comes from being inspired by everyone around me. Like I'm, I'm so energized by hearing about what they're doing and the difference they're making and that I get to coach and be part of that. And so it's, it's lovely um, to think about, you know, how do we, how do we come across? How do we um, engage in that kind of conversation and, and what actually fires up our energy as well? Yeah, that's nice. I think the the environment, what's uh, the external around us, but also what's internal to us, and you bring them together for that higher purpose. You know, we're all reaching that same outcome and that same result, and and uh, the energy that um, I guess develops from that, and you know, kapow sort of thing. Massive energy when it's external, those people around you contributing, but also your internal energy. Yeah, so what we can think about what's in our control there as well. Like how can we, we maybe we're not in control of our environment, but how, how can we bring it? And, and I'm also, we mentioned in the book also, uh, we don't have to have this rah, rah kind of woohoo, you know, uh, kind of energy. We all bring a different type of energy uh, and our energies will change and move according to who we're working with and what we're exploring. So I think sometimes that idea of energy is associated with how many coffees have you had because you're, you're pumped up, but it's not about that. It's about, I think, finding that, that those inner qualities about and, and our own energy signature, as Emma has shared with us, that, that, is, that is unique to each of us, not just the rah-rah spinning out on caffeine kind of energy. So I think that's important to explore as well. I think it's also that it, it's genuine. So your energy has to come from a place that's genuine, um, which is why the, if you think about how many coffees have you had, that's using an external force to create the genuineness. But if it's coming from that place where you genuinely want to be there, you're genuinely curious, if you genu you, you know, you've got the passion for what you're working on, it will come out, with, and you're right, Natalie, it's based on who you're with and, and what that needs to look like because sometimes it's just a quiet knowing that the what you're saying and the questions that you're asking are exactly the right question and that's where the energy comes from. Mm, yeah, absolutely. yeah, I love that. And and we all are bringing a different, like, you know, even across the coaches that are on the line and, and uh, you know, I, I know we know a lot of the people who are on the line and we bring different energies to our conversations and to our coaching. And I think that is, that is what is so important that we're not trying to, as you, um, I think you're alluding to, um, Paula, also we're not trying to be someone else that we're not. So that's really lovely as well. I like the way that Ian says, you know, you can work on your signature yet. So as you approach a meeting or a breakfast, anything with another person, grow uh, your signature as you grow that meeting. So a lovely reference to uh, the grow model there and, uh, you know, adding our, our coaching skill to, uh, to that signature piece as well. And I'm wondering, um, in the... The application to the workplace is, is obviously really strong um, and I, I get the feeling that people are, are tired or lacking energy. Um, what's a, a manager coaching their people uh, to do about that, do you think? And that's for, for em, Emily, uh, Emily, Emma or, or Natalie. I've mixed, I, put, I put both your names together there. It becomes Emily, Natalie and Emma. 
Um, what's a manager coaching their people to do about that, do you think, with that tiredness, that lack of energy? Yeah, well, I actually think it's more common at the moment than ever before with what I'm certainly experiencing with a lot of my clients around the hybrid workplace. And it's not like, it's like managers don't necessarily have their finger on the pulse with how somebody is feeling because of the remote workplace as well. So asking questions, I know we talk about this a lot, uh, but just actually asking somebody, where do you get your energy from? As simple as that, or tell me about how you, uh, as what we describe in the book, how do you top up your energy levels? And so knowing the answers to those questions, again, which we mentioned around self-awareness is absolutely critical because as Paula and Natalie just mentioned, it is different for everybody. Mm. So not only the way I interact with people as a coach or as a manager, as a leader, but simply asking people to be aware of it. And if they don't know, then even in the book, we've, we've given some suggestions and we, we even say, hey, give three of these techniques a, a go around energy top ups, because and especially as leaders, as managers, I think the other thing that I've noticed over the pandemic is these leaders are giving and giving and giving. And in the book, we talk about energy giving to the point where because people are potentially remote, they're making a lot of the decisions for them or they're taking on more work uh, mm -hmm. than, than what they're used to or that's that's actually necessary. They think it's necessary, but in the end, they end up suppressing their own energy, getting exhausted, burnt out. And of course, we're seeing talent being lost in the workplace. So I think that that's really important that we ask that simple question. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know, we help them explore that. We take a deeper dive into unpacking what that looks like for them also outside of the workplace. It's not just what gives you energy uh, in the workplace, but also outside of the workplace. Because as we know, I, I call it work-life integration or work-life rhythm, because I, you know, I think as high performers and being with my high performance coaching background, sporting hat on, we're never in, we're never completely at balance, you know, the we're in the ocean sort of bobbing up and down, and, and there's peak times where our energy needs to be going uh, full throttle, so to speak. Uh, so being able to ask that great question and helping somebody unpack that, I think are some of the keys around that bridge. Mm, yeah, no, that, that's great. And Nat, anything to add to that in terms of what, uh, I guess, managers coaching their people um, and, and how to, um, I guess, meet that need of people that are tired or lacking energy? Yeah, I think um, I, I think you know that I'm mad for a scaling question. So yeah. I think I think it doesn't hurt here to actually kick in a scaling question and to reflect for ourselves, but also ask our teams. You know, on a scale of one to ten, where's your energy at at the moment? You know, zero meaning I've got nothing more to give, or ten I'm firing on all cylinders, or whatever that might be, and then get a bit of a pulse check. Um, and then, as Emma said you know, thinking about what do we need to do to top up our energy? Um, and we're all linked through to mental health first aid and mental health first aid training. And, and, and a lot of our discussions lately have been around how do we look after our own mental health and our mental wellness? So perhaps it is asking some questions around uh, what do you need to top up your energy? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean doing more things. It might be doing less things, um, taking a bit of time out or taking a break or going for a walk or whatever actually um, enables our energy to come back into us um, and, you know, and to move that, that, that pendulum, um, you know, as Emma's talked about. So sometimes if we're giving a lot of energy, it might actually be just having more quiet time for ourselves or something like that. And I think the more questions we ask around that and check in, um, I think can, you know, can have real benefits, not only for individuals, but also for the wellness of the workplace as well. Yeah, and I, I love the way that, um, you know, you've, you've raised scaling questions and there's some really valuable coaching models and tools that, that contribute to that, um, that ability to look at how to top up your energy. You know, this is where I'm at. This is, you know, I'm at a seven out of 10, for example, at the moment. How do I top up that energy? What do I need to do 
more of or less of? Or what do I need to start doing and perhaps let go of? Um, so those sorts of things to try and um, top up that energy, that's, that's really great. Um, and Ian says, I like the notion of asking about the non-work energy. <laughs> might be some good clues to how they can top up energy in work. It values alignment, strengths-based coaching, et cetera. Be curious, absolutely, And It's all that, all that uh, the coaching models and tools and techniques and everything that we use to contribute to have that happen. Mm. Yeah. So uh, Emma, tell us about who listed energy as their top uh, their top ten practice, and and what more did they say about that? What what, what happened? Well, let, let me just turn to page seventy three. Uh, <laughs> I will as well. <laughs> so uh, so one of my again, he's definitely a mentor, somebody I admire, look up to ever since I arrived in America. Motivational speaker and coach Alistair McCaw. And he's, he does have a different energy to me when he presents, but people still say the same about both of us in relation to the energy we bring. Uh, I had an awesome moment with uh, many of you on the line may know of a former world number one doubles player, Bethany Maddox-Sands. I mean, she is a character on the tour. If you don't know this, this, this woman, check her out because she has incredible energy herself but when I asked her what makes a great coach she gave me a three word sentence she said read uh sorry two words reading energy what makes a great coach someone who reads energy or reading energy that was her answer and I thought wow that was really interesting to me and my my partner have grew up with her coach so I was like, well, what did she mean by that? And, and, and he said, when we're out on court together, when we're having a session, she loves when we are on the same page. She loves not, she does not like being dictated to. She wants to understand the why, the what, the how of the activity. What is the purpose? So they have a great dialogue on the court and a great energy between them, which I love uh, and I also love that uh, tennis legend and coach Pat Vandermeer, whose uh, husband recently passed away, Dennis Vandermeer. Now, even though I didn't get to meet Dennis, when I asked Pat, what do you think that Dennis would have said? Because he's somebody that I definitely would have loved to learn from. She, she mentioned energy. And I thought, how cool is that, that somebody like his wife shared that about Dennis and she said it as well. Uh, one of my all-time uh, bestest friends in the world. I had, you know, that's the beauty of writing a book. I had to throw Julie Gordon in there. She's the tennis coach and sports psychologist from Scotland. Mm. And I love that she said energy as well as entrepreneur coach, Laurie Youngson. Now, again, please Google Laurie Youngson if you don't know her. She's doing amazing work um, in, uh, it's called Equal Playing Field in running events for, like she ran a soccer match on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro for women to be able to uh, have equal opportunities, equal pay in soccer. And I I actually flew to Lyon in France because she inspired me so much to be on one of the soccer teams. Wow. <laughs> I, I called it tennis for kicks. But anyway, Laurie Youngson and uh, quarterback, former NFL quarterback, Oliver Luck, who has been an athletic director for years and years. That's just to mention a couple of people uh, in that mentioned energy and of course we talk about Michelle Krause and, and Mary Pat Faley who are huge energy components here in the in the US of A. So just wonderful. to mention a few. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing that Emma. And Nat, anything to add? Yeah, I love the um the quote about reading energy because when I think about the practice of energy, uh, probably two things come up for me. It is about reflecting on our own energy and, and how, we, how we restore our energy, how we bring that energy. Uh, but then also as a coach, it's about practicing that reading the energy of the people we're coaching. And perhaps we are reflecting on how we match the energy. So if we are too um, energetic about something and our client is not, there's a real mismatch there. Mm -hmm. So how do we build rapport through our energy? Um, how do we help shift the, the client's energy or the people we're coaching in the workplace? How do, we, how do we shift their energy? So it's not just the matching of the energy, but it's then the, the mirroring and shifting of the energy to lift rays or 
change the energy as well. So, so we have a um, the the conversations that Emma and I had that 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 energy interaction, that energy signature, um, is so important, and that's what I've been reflecting on. And and we can practice uh, that in terms of how we're showing up as coaches, how we're working with different people with different energies as well. Mm, that's fantastic. Thanks, Nat. That's lovely. Well, thank you, Emma. Thank you, Natalie, for for sharing your insights uh, into energy. And um, I might hand back to Paula now um, for to get to continue on. Sure. So, we all know how well I work with technology. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, so thank you, um, Emma and Natalie. Um, the only thing I wanted to add there too was that for managers. When you're in the workplace, the better you know your staff, the better you know the people reporting into you, the more you're going to notice changes in energy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really great spot to start with. So if you've got someone who's generally bounces into your office and they don't bounce into your office, you can actually start with a question around, you know, how's your, ener how's your energy going today or what's happening that looks like something's going on? Tell, tell me more about what's happening for you. Mm -hmm. So... For managers, it's really about that connection in with your team. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. So, you know, noticing energy changes and then being able to have a conversation around that. I'm glad you brought that up, Paula. Thank you. Cool. So um, for anyone who hasn't had a chance to buy the book, we strongly recommend that you go and do that um, and you'll get all of the wisdom that you got from today, our other um, webinars about the the book as well and many so much more that's in there and opportunities to really reflect on yourself click on the, the scan the qr code and you'll be right there Oops. so for um those of you in um, australia some of the programs we've got coming up are the diploma of organizational coaching the certificate for in workplace and business coaching our next um intakes for that will be next year and we've got a face-to-face -face in Melbourne for some anyone who wants to get back into the classroom. We have a mental health first aid program in December and a leader as coach in November. Emma what have you got going on? We have potentially save the date 25th of November a book launch in Melbourne. So we've just finished up a leader as coach course here and in less than four weeks, in less than a month, I will be touching down in Melbourne, Australia after being away for three years. Mm -hmm. And so I, we, Nat and I, we love to celebrate. We love achieving goals. And we hope as many Melbournians, or please, if you are not in Melbourne, please fly down on the 25th of November. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just organising a venue right now and we're going to have a little in-person book launch and maybe we'll even do a hybrid version. Who knows? With technology these days, Paula, and your beautiful skills, I'm sure we can make something happen. But uh, save the date, everybody. <laughs> Perfect. Anything else you, anyone else wanted to add at this stage? I just said to remind people, if you are in the US, um, Emma's doing an enormous amount of work there, um, delivering the High Performance Coaching Certificate, which is the, the, um, the certificate for, um, and Leader as Coach programs as well. So it's, it's been fantastic to partner, uh, you know, with Emma to deliver those uh, internationally coach, internationally recognised, International Coach Federation uh, recognized programs as well. So reach out to Emma if you are listening to this uh, and you're not in Australia to join one of her programs. Amazing. Well, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us today and I'm going to stop the recording so that people can get their certificate, their CCEU um, screen print. Um, so everybody, um, I hope your energy levels have risen during um, our session today. Mine really has, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I hope you go off and enjoy the rest of your evening, day, and then run into the weekend. And we will see you at next week at the next Coaching Cafe.